everybody. So in celebration of our September Fear the Night box, I'm here with a few recommendations for you. Now these recommendations aren't spooky or creepy necessarily like you would think um, because in October we're gonna have all sorts of those videos coming up, but I decided I would feature books that either have the word night or the word dark in the title. Um, so these are kind of a bit random. We have everything from pic um, from graphic novels to nonfiction to you know your typical YA to classics. We've got a few books on here for you. Um, I've read a lot of books with the word dark and night in them, so it turns out, but today I'm gonna be recommending five that I really love. So first up is a book that I just finished um, two days ago and I, absolutely loved it way more than I ever thought I would and that is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. Um, this is a book that I've seen around and knew of for quite a long time but I really had no idea what it was about um, and it is a science fiction book that was published in the 60s that won both the Hugo Award and the Nebula Award and I can absolutely see why. Um, it is about a man who is sent to a planet called Winter as an emissary to try to get them to join um, like this intergalactic civilization or um, like uh, cooperation I guess. Um, and on this planet uh, people are like ambigendered I suppose so they can both choose and change their gender um, um, pretty much at will and there's like certain times of the month where uh, diff different genders are present. It's so fascinating um, and just a whole discussion of gender and what gendering people does to a society is so interesting. I loved it. I thought it was so so well done. The writing itself was just absolutely spectacular. I even the forward, Ursula K. Le Guin wrote a forward to the book just discussing what science fiction is and what the purpose of it should be and it was just fantastic right from page one. I highly, highly recommend it. I was so surprised and it just blew me off my feet and easy five stars. So next up I have The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. Now this is a book that I really loved and I might say it, I think I actually liked it more than The Cruel Prince. I'm probably in the minority on that one and I did love The Cruel Prince, don't worry, but I really, really liked this one. It is about siblings Hazel and Ben who have grew up in the town of Fairfold, um, which is known for having fairies. So it's kind of this tourist attraction, but the people who live in the town know that the fairies are actually real. Um, and outside of this town, there is a horned boy that, who has been sleeping in a glass coffin for ages. And growing up, both Hazel and Ben um, have been in love with this sleeping boy. Um, and like the the local youth like party around this like glass coffin and it's just like a fixture of the town until one day the boy wakes up and the coffin is empty and the story goes off from there. It is such a good book. I loved it. Um, I know it is supposed to have a crossover with The Cruel Prince, a very minor one. I didn't pick up on it so if you know what it is and it's not a spoiler let me know in the comments but it was such a fun story. Holly Black writing Faye, you just can't go wrong. Next up I have a beautiful little graphic novel and that is Night Lights by Lorena Alvarez Gomez. Um, this is a book that yes it does have a plot but it is mostly it is just so so beautiful. It is about a little girl named Sandy who um, is an amazing artist and uh, she brings her dreams to life um, through art and it's just absolutely beautiful and then one day there is a kind of creepy little new girl at school uh, named Morphe who takes a fascination to Sandy's artwork and she might have some sinister plans um, for her but it is just one of the most beautiful pieces of art I've ever seen. If you haven't read it yet I highly recommend it. It is just stunning. Now I have his historical fiction slash sci-fi book but that is Midnight at the Electric by Jodie Lynn Anderson. Um, this book takes place in three different timelines. It is in 2065, 1934, and 1919. So in 2065, there is a girl who has been granted a like coveted spot on um, a spaceship to go live on Mars. But before she leaves, she finds a journal in her house um, that was written by a girl um, over a hundred years in the past. Um, and that girl is the girl in the timeline of 1934 who lives in the Dust Bowl. 
um, and is really trying to save her sister. Her sister has bad lungs and there is this uh, like not circus but like entertainment show in her town called The Electric and the person who runs The Electric has promised there is a way to give immortality. And then the third timeline is in 1919 and it is about a heartbroken girl whose brother was killed in the war and she wants to sail to America to find her long lost childhood best friend. And in the end all of these timelines um, uh, cross paths and interweave and it was just such a really well written book. I think it's underrated and more people need to check it out. And last but certainly not least I have a non-fiction uh, recommendation for you and that is I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Now this one was everywhere last year I think with good reason. If you like true crime you've probably heard of it um, and it is about Michelle McNamara's kind of fascination and obsession with finding the Golden State Killer. Um, before I read this book I didn't know really anything about the Golden State Killer and I will say just like graphic trigger warnings for rape, sexual assault, and murder in this one. It is not for the light of heart. Um, but more than just the story of the Golden State Killer and Michelle McNamara's um, like research, um, it also kind of read, you really got to see in McNamara's mind as she was writing this. It had like this kind of memoir element to it. Um, Tragically, Michelle did pass before the novel was fi uh, before the book was finished, but one of her co-workers um, did finish uh, the book, and it is just a really, really well-told true crime story. If you're interested in true crime, check it out. All right, so those are some of my recommendations that feature either the word dark or night in the title. Um, we're going to be doing lots of spooky recommendations uh, next month, so stay tuned for that. Um, our September Fear the Night boxes are going to be shipping next week as of uploading this video, so I hope you guys are excited because I certainly am. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye! Mm -hmm.